What's going on guys? I got another knife review here for you. This is of the Zero Tolerance Zero 0200. Uh, this is a knife that I've been going back and forth on in terms of whether or not I wanted to get it. Um, finally an opportunity for me came up um, to acquire this knife as well as another one that I'll be reviewing later on. And uh, so I'm, I'm definitely excited to have this um, in my collection for now. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to be keeping this, um, but yeah, this is brand new and um, it is a really cool knife. And I'm going to be talking about just a couple things, a couple comparisons, um, and all that kind of stuff. But just to get the quick uh, specs out of the way, because I think it's kind of important, as it is a popular knife, um, just so that you might know what you're getting into. Um, I have handled this in the shop before, so I knew that it's a you know definitely a beefy folder. Um, this is a <laughs> a sub eight ounce knife, um, so you know a lot of people like knives around the you know maybe four to five and a half ounce um, weights, but this one weighing it at seven point seven to seven point nine ounces, it is a hefty hefty folder. Um, pretty thick slab of 154 cm, you know, overall length at just under 9 inches, um, the blade is 3 and 3 fourths inches or so uh, long. So again, this is a, a, a big tactical knife, um, grippy, kind of like alligator skin G10 uh, that you can see here, kind of your standard uh, two screw um, pocket clip from Zero Tolerance. You know, and keep in mind this is open construction and you can see uh, how there's some milling, uh, some holes milled out of the liners uh, on this knife. And even with that in mind, you know, these are big, thick stainless steel liners. Um, even with all of that, it is a um, still a very, very strong and heavy folder. Uh, very much like the uh, 0300. Um, the 0300 has the same size blade, uh, 3 and 3 fourths inches. Um, but it does have a higher profile. It's got the recurve, um, very uh, just kind of signature of Ken Onion style, which this is one of his designs again. So, um, you know, one of the things about this knife is that it's got a very, very thick handle. Um, probably one of the thickest ones that I've ever owned, where it really does just uh, fill up your hand. And in my opinion, uh, it's probably a little bit too thick and I can't I want to preface this by saying that it's it is a very comfortable handle for sure um, both in reverse grip and um, front grip and all that kind of stuff you know with the choils and with the curve this big bulky belly right here on the handle actually for me hugs my hand very my hand hugs the handle very well you know my index finger sits right here in the little um, finger groove here and then my other fingers just kind of wrap around and then again as it tapers off near the butt of the handle uh, my pinky finger just wraps around very nicely um, and yet I still say it's it's a little bit too thick I almost feel like this could uh, go down a little bit um, and I think it would be somewhat more comfortable and maybe if the G10 slabs weren't as thick I mean if you kind of see you know from here you can see how it kind of humps up uh, right here so it's a you know it's milled out 3d milled out you know from a probably a pretty thick slab of G10 I mean you can even see where the pocket clip holes are and all that kind of stuff you know it started from a very large piece of G10 um, two thumb studs kind of the terrace thumb studs that you know they are not uh, blade stops so you can see the space between there um, it's it's stopped by a stop pin. This part right here, the top of the tang of the blade is radiused ever so slightly, so that it does kind of just wrap around and hit that um, that blade stop right there or that stop pin. Um, you can see right here on the flipper, uh, it's got that nice cutout, so it wraps around as you close it. It wraps around um, the stop pin right there. So hopefully you're able to see this. On the video, uh, it's got the nice pillar construction, uh, pillar standoffs, and all that kind of stuff. So, um, I have to say though that this is one of the smoothest flippers 
I think right now, uh, currently, you know, ZT is is commonly known for, you know, its zero uh, five fifty or five fifty one series, um, you know, hinder design and all that kind of stuff with the stop pins and frame lock and and all that kind of stuff. You know, the five sixty with the ball bearings and you know the KVT system with the flipper and, and all that kind of stuff is it's all the rage right now and they make for very very smooth um, making for very smooth flippers but you know what like the 0 200 the 0 350 and you know the one I just acquired the 0 700 I'm gonna be doing a review on this these are all proof that, or yeah, even the Hinder, but the Hinder has uh, Teflon washers, which do make it smoother, and uh, it's custom construction, all that kind of stuff. But it's proof that, you know, production knives can be very smooth on phosphor bronze uh, bushings or, or washers, you know. And, and this is one of the smoothest flippers that I've ever use you know it, I think it's just as smooth I mean it doesn't it doesn't ride like you know the KVT system you know the KVT system you know all the potential energy gets thrown into those ball bearings and so it just it just continues like like rolling you, you kind of get that feeling that it's rolling you know across you know as as it's pivoting around but on the on the bronze phosphor bushings right here I'm not really even pushing that hard on the flipper or storing that much poten uh, potential energy in my finger, I just kind of flick it out and it, it just fires out uh, extremely smooth. So um, I would say even smoother than the 350 um, due to the fact that the 350, I mean this flies out really smooth too, but um, you know this was made with a speed safe system uh, in there. So I took the spring out and it does spring out pretty fast, but if I don't flick it you know just right see it doesn't it won't close or it won't fly all the way open uh, I'm not giving any kind of wrist flick so if I do push it with any kind of like more authority than it does it, it does but you can you can kind of goof up the flip if you will uh, this one again maybe it's the weight of the blade you know the it's not like the flipper sticks out all that much from the frame so you know but with just the smallest little flick it is so smooth you know and again it's just riding on phosphor bronze bushings so, um, as a flipper, this is definitely uh, one of the smoothest manual flippers uh, that I own right now. Um, again, this is a hefty tactical folder um, meant for heavy use, 154 cm blade. You know, it's going to hold up just fine, just like any Emerson. Um, I kind of want to do a comparison between, you know, these zero tolerances. I mean, you're kind of starting to see some of the similarities. You know, black G10 with, you know, these parkerized black clips with stainless steel. You know, Emerson obviously has titanium or at least one side titanium liners with kind of this, uh, what I've been learning, this non-ferrous uh, stainless steel liner so it's not magnetic. You know, um, a lot of these black G10 uh, models with, uh, this, you know, these liners, you know, they're all stainless steel liners um, that I believe are... Uh, magnetic. Let me just check here. Yeah, so they're all magnetic. So they are um, ferrous stainless steel liners on, on these zero tolerances. But you just see a lot of these similarities. You know, the DLC coating on the blades. This is just kind of a ceramic black coating on the Emersons. Um, you know, Emersons always have pretty much typically, you know, always have the back spacer, G10 back spacer um, in black. And these zero tolerances, G10 backspacer on the 350, um, open pillar construction on the 700, and and then on the 200 as well. Um, but just very, you know, very similar. Uh, obviously, these two blades right here have S30V. Um, this one has 154 cm. So again, this kind of just reminds me a lot of uh, Emerson blades, you know, and. And this is definitely a very capable blade, um, for sure. You know, again, so G10 slab, stainless steel, and this, you know, recurve, kind of like a commander, um, if you will. So, you know, whether or not this is, 
you know, can hold up to everything that an Emerson can, you know, I would say absolutely yes. Um, and whether or not the construction is just as good as an Emerson, I would say probably yes and if not better um, than these Emersons. And at the price, uh, you can probably find these knives, the 200, at around, um, you know, maybe 100, 110, um, 120s typically. You know, whereas Emersons can run you, I mean, in the secondary market, they can actually run pretty cheap. Um, but at retail, you know, 220, 225 sometimes. So um, definitely for the price, a zero tolerance, you know, a brand that I used to not like, you know, <laughs> what brands did I not like? You know, I didn't like zero tolerance or I didn't like Emerson before. Um, but zero tolerance is quickly becoming one of my uh, favorite production, like full production companies. So the stuff that they're doing out in Oregon um, through uh, Kershaw and all that kind of stuff is just great. They're putting out some just amazing production knives and collaborations and all that kind of stuff. So I've been very pleased uh, by what they have been putting out. Um, against the Satu here, you know, this is my heaviest, I think the heaviest knife that I own at 10 ounces, um, 4 inches of S30V frame lock. Um, obviously, you know, this is a, a beast of a folder, but you know, either of these two knives I feel like would do fine in the outdoors and under any kind of uh, hardcore use. Um, I would be confident in taking any of these two and, you know, not worrying about them falling apart or, or breaking or anything like that. So, uh, definitely the Emerson 0200 is, is one that I would recommend uh, without a doubt, especially for guys with, you know, large hands and who are really wanting to carry a very smooth, uh, just a very finely fitted um, tactical folder. I think you can't go wrong with the Zero 0200. Um, if this used S30V, I think this would be a um, just a deal. It's just an absolutely awesome, awesome blade. 154 CM again is no slouch, so I'm definitely not knocking that steel. Um, but that would just make this one all the more better. Um, did I say more better? Anyway, so uh, Zero 0200. Can't recommend highly enough. Uh, whether again, whether or not I'm going to keep this in my collection, I'm not sure. You know, it's again, I'm just it, it's just kind of big for my hands, kind of bulky. Um, the Satu obviously is too, but it does have a, I think it has a thinner profile uh, than see, than the Zero Two Hundred. The Zero Two Hundred is fatter than the Satu. So again it kind of it, it it fits your hand it, it molds around your hand but it just almost feels too big uh, it really does feel like a, a fixed blade with those you know g10 slabs and and all that kind of stuff so for some people that's going to be a great thing um so i'm not taking away from that at all so anyway uh, those are my little quick takes on the zero 0200 awesome awesome blade uh whether it's for me uh, i'm not positive yet i'll have to get around to you know maybe carrying it or something like that. But again, I might be uh, selling this one off in, in some time. All right, so let me know what you guys think in the comment down below. Uh, appreciate you guys watching my videos and you guys take care and I'll see you on the next vid. See ya, bye.